Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thanks for joining me in this video today. If you're new here, welcome, I'm Sade. Please consider subscribing because this is about to be my favorite room makeover to date. My best friend Ness has just bought her first home that she worked so, so hard for and I couldn't miss the opportunity to give her the most fun, girly, Instagrammable dressing room as a congratulations and a massive thank you for being the best friend to me for the last 15 years. I actually don't know how she's put up with me that long. She's a real one. This is a new built house so we're starting off with a clean slate which is always nice and as always when starting a room makeover we cleared the space and moved everything outside. Ooh, it's proper big. Oh, oh. <laughs> then we'll have to carry it. Oh. Oh. Break it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh, <actually. laughs> I always have the best time when she's around. We just get each other's humour. <laughs> so to kick things off, we started to lay down some masking tape to reduce the time needed to cut in the paint, but I've been having some issues with masking tape recently, which I'll get into a little more later on. Ness and I had a couple design sessions picking and choosing the wallpaper, wall paint, furniture and accessories that she loved and we thought would work together in unison. She decided on this dusty pink paint by Graham Brown in the colour Sugar and Spice alongside this black and white dot polka dot paper, <laughs> polka dot paper, wallpaper, both of which will be linked down below for you. I've worked with a number of different paint brands now and I must say this one is way up there for me. It's a perfect consistency, has a great colour payoff and a little bit really does go a long way. The paint and wallpaper was kindly gifted by Graham and Brown so thank you to them for giving me the opportunity to try those out. Even though that sound is so satisfying, here's the issue that I said I had with the masking tape. It's only been a recent thing, but I've noticed that the tape must be too sticky for some walls, which has resulted in flecks of paint being pulled off with the tape. I just used a white paint to tidy up those mistakes, but in the future to avoid this issue, I may just go in full professional and try my hand at cutting in freehand. As mentioned, Nesh chose this really fun and statement black and white dot wallpaper from Graham and Brown, but initially we weren't sure if it was going to be too much in a small room. So to help us make that decision, we used the Graham and Brown app, which allows you to see their paints and wallpapers in your own spaces using augmented reality, which is pretty cool and gets you really excited to decorate the space. Wallpapering is probably my least favourite task when flipping a room but this wallpaper was actually really easy to use and even though I had to pattern match, the fact that it required minimal removal of air bubbles and it didn't slide around the place actually made the job 10 times easier. I always measure my wall length, give an extra 15 centimeters either side as a contingency, paste the wall and then stick my wallpaper on top of that just because I found it easier this way than trying to get a massive wallpaper pacing table in a small room and maneuvering sticky wallpaper about the place. I just find this so much easier. This 
I'll use a clean, slightly damp cloth to smooth the paper out, remove any residue, and then I'll use a very sharp Stanley blade to cut my wallpaper to the ceiling and to the skirting. A blunt blade will most likely cause rips and tears, tears, they will cause tears, and tears, so just grab new blades for a pound just to save the hassle. I just wanted to address this small section. I used up two out of three of my rolls of paper and instead of opening the third, I just decided to use some of the leftover wallpaper sections that I had, pattern match it and cut it to size. It was actually surprisingly easy to do and I'm not saying it will work for every type of wallpaper, but it may be worth giving a go if it's just a very small section because it saved me a whole roll of wallpaper. I'm scared for you. Oh, I don't need to be scared. I'm not scared. Well, well, electrics. No, it's My off. dad won't even do it. It's off. Yeah, but when you put it on, it goes. Oh, Touch wood. Thanks for the vote of confidence there, Ness. <laughs> I wanted to flip this light fitting that we got from Yusk. By the way, I have a Yusk haul coming up on my channel very soon because it is the greatest shop ever, but it was getting late and it didn't look as easy to do as I thought it would be. So we just left it for a task for the next day and cracked on with building the wardrobes, which are also from Yusk and were only 170 pounds. <laughs> This 60 centimetre round mirror was an absolute steal from the range at £25, but we really wanted a gold one to accentuate the pinks and the wallpaper, so we unscrewed the back and took the mirror frame and the wardrobe handles outside to spray paint. Wiping items down with sugar soap before painting or spray painting is a good idea as it helps to remove any contaminants and allows the paint to adhere a little bit better to improve the finished result. We just used this Rust-Oleum metallic gold spray paint which we weren't sure if it was going to be too much of a cheap looking gold but it actually worked out perfectly. It was the perfect gold tone that we wanted for the room so we sprayed the frame and the handles two times over just leaving an hour in between coats. The makeup desk is the Marm from Ikea and we wanted to give it a little teeny tiny uplift so we used some paint in a slightly more dusty blush colour again by Graham and Brown and layered that on the top surface. This paint isn't a furniture paint so I would not recommend it for that reason but because the dresser has got a glass pane which sits on top the paint would be protected and therefore it would last so it was fine to go in with for this. This is my Starbucks voucher. Can you just say double check? Because I'm pretty sure that I've switched it off, but just double check downstairs. <laughs> Please remember to switch off the supply when you're doing electrics if you're attempting to do them yourself. This light was pretty tricky to hang because I had to cut a lot of the excess wire off as it was far too much of a drop for this room. Once that was all hooked up and working, the vision of the room started to come together because that light fitting immediately took centre stage and gave the room the bougie feel that we were aiming for. I always get questions as to the hollow wall anchors that I talk about when fitting heavy items to new build hollow walls, so I thought I'd show you these ones from B&Q. These are my go-to, I absolutely swear by them, but I have noticed this is the second time that I've had issues with them when trying to install them straight after hanging wallpaper. I think the wallpaper paste somewhat softens the plaster underneath, meaning that the hollow wall anchors don't get enough grip to work properly, so if you're doing this on newly wallpapered walls, just wait a couple of days before trying to use these because they won't work. So I had to abandon this and use another type of wall screw but that worked perfectly fine.
As I said, my favourite room makeover to date and it's fitting that it's for one of my favourite people ever. I'm so happy that Ness has got this gorgeous space to get ready in, take pictures in and just feel happy in whenever she walks into the room. Everything has been linked down below for you guys if I've managed to find it online somewhere and I have a massive yes call coming soon so do not miss that. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this. Please do like and subscribe whilst you're here and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye!